here we go again. Another book on Stoicism. This book is titled The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius in the translation of George Long and with decorations by Paul McFarlane. The title, just like the rest of the book, is a bit of a mouthful. It looks quite small. If you want to look, here you go. It's quite small, but the themes and language which it presents are in a manner that is slightly complicated, and I will go through and explain how so in just a moment. Now, specifically for this edition of the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, you will need some knowledge of historical context yourself, which is quite difficult for the average person to have on a niche area of ancient Roman and Greek history and philosophy. This translation does not provide you with useful inserts or anything of the kind to explain the history which is present in the text. So therefore, when you don't understand something, you are very likely going to have to do your own diligent research. Other translations of the meditations and of ancient history have at least a preface which describes the historical and philosophical importance and relevance of the text. Now, this is a translation of the meditations of Marcus Aurelius, which I have also done a full reading of now on the YouTube channel, but this is an abridged edition. It's shortened. Abridged is the fancy way of saying that, but I think it's shortened with a purpose. The meditations are quite repetitive, if I do say so. I've read them a number of times in different varying translations, and Marcus Aurelius does seem to repeat himself, but if you are an avid philosophical diary or journal maker, I think you would also run into the same situation. When considering your life, your struggles, and your thoughts, they do seem to be pretty repetitive. And this is Marcus Aurelius's personal journal, so I wouldn't expect anything different. However, I would be hesitant to say that it's easier to read because it's shortened. It may be easier than reading the entirety of the George Long translation, but it's still quite a difficult read if you're new to philosophy or old English, I would really not recommend it. It's not a bad book, but the language is quite old, and I would keep that in mind. 
if you do read it, you'll notice that the old English language is quite authoritative, at least it gives this kind of air of importance or authority with the Z's and the thys probably left over from some sort of cultural connotations from the King James edition of the Bible. I'll read you, I'll flip randomly and then I'll read you something and just I'll just show you what I mean by the language. Okay, this is a random excerpt from page 26. One man, when he has done a service to another, is ready to set it down to his account as a favour conferred. Another is not ready to do this, but still in his own mind he thinks of the man as his debtor and he knows what he has done. A third in a manner does not even know what he has done, but he is like a vine which has produced grapes, and seeks for nothing more after it has once produced its proper fruit. As a horse when he has run, a dog when he has tracked the game, a bee when it has made the honey. So a man when he has a done a good act, does not call out for others to come and see, but goes on to another act, as a vine goes on to produce again the grapes in season. Now, because it was a random selection, it, it only slightly illustrated my point. The language is quite old. Um, most of you will be able to roughly understand what the author means there. He's basically saying that in true collaborative social human nature, it is natural for us to want to help each other, and that is in itself its own reward, and seeking approval for doing it, or praise, is not natural to the good man or woman, and is slightly more of a selfish ambition, and therefore someone seeking to be a good person does not need to seek for the praise of other people in doing righteous or good actions. But. Marx Aurelius likes to use metaphors quite a lot, and when you consider metaphors, you know about the horse and the bee and the dog and the vine, and when you consider the old language, it's quite straining to read for long periods of time, and I wouldn't recommend it. And I think in the manner in which Aurelius wrote his journal, um, it should be read not in a sitting like a book, meant to be read from cover to cover, but in your meditations as you consider life, as you journal, as you write or think or consider about the universe. I think it may be of use to you to take a chunk um, with a common theme and consider its implications or its truth or value to you. If you're new to Old English or philosophy at all, just don't, don't choose this one to start with. It'll be possible for you to understand, but it won't be worth your time. If you're new to philosophy, I would recommend you read The Meditations, the same book, translated by Gregory Hayes, which is a more recent and legible, or rather intelligible, um, translation with some more contemporary language. If you're new to Old English, there's a lot you can do. I would recommend Shakespeare, and I would recommend getting an edition of Shakespeare where 
have the layout and then one page is Shakespeare and then the other page is the contemporary English translation. You can find those online and you can also buy hard or soft copies of those. And those are both great introductions into this sort of a book. Um, since I have experience with Old English and philosophy, I could understand the book relatively easily, but it took longer. Um, it took longer for me than a book this length usually does, and though I did manage to remember to spend my time productively, I still took longer than maybe I would have liked, but again, that's okay. As long as you're considering the meaning when trying to understand the text, I think you're gaining some value out of the investment of your time. I'd like to emphasize again, if you're going to read this, don't do a solid read through. I did do a solid read through, and it was rather painful. Mm, and I've also added some tabs in, as I like to do on some of my books, to revisit during my daily philosophical personal journaling. Again, it will be easier and have more utility to read it piece by piece, by common theme or motif, or just one meditation at a time. If you're interested in a more complete review, though it be short, I have a link to my website in the description. And I'm very happy to see you for another episode. I quite like reading and ASMR, and so I think this is a good outlet, and I hope that you're gaining some utility out of listening to or watching me describe what I read and what I learn. Thank you. And I hope that you manage to have a pause and a break and a rest and a reprieve and good night.